On Tuesday, a group called the Illinois Reform Commission released its recommendations for cleaning up state politics. We're joined tonight by the head of that commission, former federal prosecutor Patrick Collins, and someone who's been raising questions about government ethics for years, Cindy Canary of the Illinois Campaign for Political Reform. And welcome both to Chicago tonight. Thank you. First of all, uh, I, I know, you know Eddie talked about this with his panel, but Patrick Collins, as a former prosecutor, I, I'm interested in your reaction to the charges. You know, there's a lot that's repeated from December. Um, I'm still struck by this notion that the time that George Ryan was being investigated on trial and the sort of message of you can get charged with a federal offense if you do these kind of things, the allegations are that Rod Blagojevich and his group were doing not just the same thing, but the same thing on steroids has been said. And that, to me, I'm still trying to grapple with that because, again, you had the governor of the highest office on trial, convicted, being sentenced, all the while the same things times two were going on. It's still hard for me to grasp. Cindy, in light of that, uh, and in light of the indictment mm -hmm. today, would you say that Illinois politics has turned a page? I think um, I would say that Illinois politics needs to turn a page. Um, actually, we're, on, we're still on the same page, and that page is, you know, we're right back with the U.S. Attorney, we're right back with indictments, we're right back with the governor looking at a trial and, you know, potential jail time. Turning a page means reforming the system. And speaking of reform, Patrick uh, Collins, your commission just recommended a set of reforms, a set of proposals, uh, four proposals specifically to fight pay-to-play politics, and briefly summarize what those proposals are. It is all under the pay-to-play umbrella, and some of our timing was twofold. One is uh, the game really is in Springfield now. That's where laws have to be passed. As we said, we sort of have a voice, but we don't have a vote. Um, so attention should be appropriately focused on Springfield. We knew the indictment was also coming because of the, the clock was ticking. Um, so we knew it was going to be a massive pay-to-play scheme. And I think our proposals, starting with campaign contribution limits, uh, procurement reforms, transparency, and even a pilot project in public finance. I mean, I think in broad strokes, those were what we got out there. These are our initial recommendations. We wanted to get them into the legislative debate. And I really think now the, the, the pressure and the discussion should be in Springfield. What, are, what is the response going to be? And I think the burden of proof has shifted from people like Cindy having to say why we need it to people in Springfield saying why we can't do it. And I think that's a real issue here. Of those four that you mentioned, is there one, if you had to say, you know what, if I can have only one, four, one of those four passed, is there one which you think is the linchpin? Yeah, and I'm biased, but contribution limits. I mean, every, every investigation I was involved in in public corruption had a campaign contribution problem. Rob Blagojevich, 400 plus contributions of $25,000 or more. Big money in politics um, is a, a problem, and Rob Blagojevich is the poster child for that. Um, it's not going to solve all the problems. There's ways around it, but that's where we got to start. And uh, you basically, your, your commission is basically calling for the state provisions to mirror the federal provisions. As a start, we also go beyond that, though. We have some bundling disclosures because once you start um, having people donate less money, the people that are going to have the real power for campaigns are the people that are gathering all the money. Um, and I also think you have to take a serious look at public finance, and we suggest a pilot project for judicial races. Um, lawyers shouldn't be able to give money to the judges that th are making decisions on their behalf. Because, Cindy, it, it's, still, uh, it's still sort of stupefying that in this state a person can give as much as he or she wants to a politician. And I think what amazes people is the fa in this state is the fact that in 45 and soon to be 46 other states and the federal government, you can't do that. But yeah, here, you want to give someone $10 million? Go right ahead. We don't even put up yield signs, let alone stop signs. And I agree with Pat 100%. You know, it is follow the money. The first thing to do is to get some contribution limits in there. Let's beef up transparency, and let's get some real enforcement. Um, that's the place to start. So would you agree that that is the, of the four, that's really the key one, the campaign uh, contribution limits? I think that, exactly. I think it's really the heart and soul of the, the problems that we've had. You know, um, and it's the one thing that the legislature in the dozen or so years I've worked on this has refused to touch, money in politics. Um, that's the nasty little secret, and that's what we have to reform. Pat Collins, the BGA, and Cindy's group uh, have been asking for these kinds of things for years. Why do you think this effort might be different? Because we've had two governors indicted in the span of four years. Because we have, both parties have sort of 
you know, this big black mark on them um, because we have, and we did a video before our press conference, and we just had this litany of state, county, city officials being indicted uh, for corruption um, because we deserve better. And I think th there's this perfect storm of activity, and I think people are saying enough, enough. We've had five town hall meetings. People are really angry. And um, I do think, I, again, I'm an optimist by nature, and I think there's something um, as meaningful has to happen. But it's got to be because people are forcing the issue. And I think the indictment here, it's going to be with us now for a while. And I like the fact that that's going to be in people's faces because that's what it's going to take. And I, I do believe we need more than limits. Um, mm -hmm. Part of the problem is if you just do limits, there's other things that sort of break through. Um, we really have to have a holistic approach to this, and I think that's what we started to propose uh, a couple days ago. Well, if uh, the action has moved to Springfield, as you say, uh, the Senate Republican leader, Christine Redonio, Cindy Canary, as you probably know, is saying that the real issue is whether Democrat, the Democratic leadership in the state is going to allow these recommendations to be brought up for a vote. What do you think the prospects are for that? I think that the prospects really depend on the people in this state. Yeah, the game has moved to Springfield, but the power still lies with the voters. And I think if there was ever a time to make sure that people don't wallow in their sorrows about this indictment and throw up their hands, you know, it's now. Pick up the telephone. Call. You know, demand it. Um, I think it's going to take some pressure because this isn't the natural inclination of our elected officials. Because to it's not in the self-interest. It's not, not in their self-interest self and, and, and spoon feed me as to why it right. is not in their self-interest. Make you it know, clear. This is the system. This is the system, first of all, that got these people elected. This is the system that allows these people to um, campaign and take in relatively few very large contributions. This is the system that puts a lot of power in the hands of legislative leadership. This is a system that they know. And I think that we have to remember that this system shouldn't be for the politicians. It should be for the people. Uh, Patrick Collins in John Cass's Tribune column yesterday, he warned that you would be rewarded for your efforts with political blowback. Has that happened yet in any way? Uh, a little bit, and it doesn't so. phase me in the light, l at least. Um, the Capital Facts is a blog that a lot of insiders read, and there was some stuff about my background that was just false. There was facts about our commission that were just false. Uh, there was facts about an interaction that was was supposedly held with the leadership that didn't happen that way. Um, so you're saying that what? Are you saying slight smear going on? A little bit. And you know what? That's uh, that's a distraction. We are here to do the people's work. Um, we're focused on the mission. Uh, we are. We do have uh, authority under the governor's um, office, and we're going to do our work. I, I stand behind my commissioners. It's been so wonderful. We're, we're not getting a penny. Um, I'm putting a lot of miles on my car. We've been all over the state. Um, People want this change, and I think the people, the legislators who think of a way not to do it, um, you know, they have to be called to account. And I'm, I'm prepared to, you know, no, that hasn't happened yet. There's a legislature in session, um, but it's, so it's not too late, and I agree with Cindy. We have to keep, people have to sign up. You know, in 2006, there were signs that Rob Bogoyevich is up to no good, and he was elected. You know, there are signs that our system is really broke. If, if we allow no change to happen, it's a pox on us. It's yeah. our fault. Patrick Collins, Cindy Canary, thank you both for being thank here. You. We appreciate it. And coming up next.